menace of kidnapping, no doubt, has spread its tentacles to the seat of power, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. With the invasion and kidnapping of some staff and their children at the Giri staff quarters of the University of Abuja by suspected bandits in the early hours of Tuesday, Nigerians, especially residents of Abuja, are worried about this development, which has been alien to the city of Abuja since the advent of banditry in Nigeria. The development has created panic in the university community, which is about 20 minutes drive to Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport. Well, how will you describe the impetus displayed by the bandits by invading a school in the federal capital territory? What must security agencies do at this point? And what is the role of citizens and what should government do differently? Guests on Nigeria Today will be providing answers to these questions in a jiffy. My name is Lydia Odijochi. We'll be right back. With me to discuss how best to tackle kidnapping in the FCT is retired Deputy Inspector General of Police in Charge of Operations, DIG, Habila Joshak. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Okay, now uh, let me begin by asking you, DIG, on Tuesday, bandits invaded the staff quarters of Uni Abuja and kidnapped some staff of the university and their family members. What is your take on this? Well, um, that incident was quite unfortunate. But um, like any other incident of this nature, it is not surprising to anyone that um, these kidnappers would go a length. Because the university is a public place. They may, they may have had some opportunity of coming in there in a disguised manner. Sometimes there are many reasons why somebody will come to the university. So it is not quite, um, quite strange, not quite surprising that um, some staff and some students or some staff of that university were picked. Uh, but this serves as a lesson. And... Um, there are many ways that um, this can be reduced and, if possible, eliminated in a, a, a university like um, the Abuja University. Well, if these bandits had the effrontery to go to the Nigerian Defense Academy to abduct a personnel, what more or what less a university? university community. Now, to attack a school in the FCT, which is the seat of power, means they are closer to the federal government. Would it be correct to say no one is safe, including those in power? Well, well that's, um, it is true that some people could make that analysis. But in crime of this nature, you remember that um, for every crime like this, there's always an insider. And there's always individuals that have had the opportunity uh, to create um, a situation where their presence uh, cannot be questioned. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when they begin to do that, then it means that some other people have compromised and some other people that are well known in that university or some other people that um, coming into that university is mm -hmm. not a hindrance. Mm -hmm will definitely be part of that. And so, um, we just, the, the, the school just need to go to the drawing board. The Nigerian police would um, redesign the security template and architecture for that university. Well, not just the university. There are, in fact, countless invasions have happened, abductions have happened, countless, we can't even, probably we've lost the count. Is that, are there no lessons learned? For people to do things differently, especially being security conscious, what sh should be done differently? Well, we've said it on over, over and over that one, in such cases of such crime like kidnapping, 
you know, most in, in Nigeria, most of the kidnapping is um, KFR, kidnap for ransom. And so it means that there are people that are idle and there are people that want to um, egg a living by kidnapping. And so we've said it over and over in security cycle that every person should be aware of his environment and take a study all the time of the people that are around them. We've also said that you have the protection of yourself first. And so this has happened. As it has happened, we expect that the security operative, particularly the security of the, of the university, must go back to the drawing board to know when to admit people or to know when also to, to create eagle eye. Mm. But individuals at homes and at work and in the market, we should be very careful because those who would want to kidnap could easily be seen trying to display some kind of, 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 of attitude that does not conform or conform with the norms. And so you have the safety of yourself, even when you have security that have been made um, in layers to protect you. And so this is a wake-up call. And um, it's not surprising, but of course, it's not a good omen. Mm -mm. And we do expect that um, the university will go back to the drawing board. And also this will also be um, another food for thought for the security agencies, particularly the internal security agencies' leadership of the Nigerian police, to assume that anything can happen in Abuja. And so they must set in place, they must in place um, security strategies that we all know. And um, quite a large number of them are available. But I don't think that um, it's, it's going to be very difficult for, for people or for criminals to want to come in here and do and go out. I know that um, this is a wake-up call. Well, this is not the first time a tertiary institution has been invaded. Now, how would you describe the level of intelligence gathering in Nigeria, especially in the FCT, and what is the way out? Yeah, um, I, 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 I have been... Uh, one of the, the, the operators, and um, not just an operator, but also designing um, some templates for the Nigerian police. Mm -hmm. And um, I could see that in Abuja, there has been a concerted effort by the police officers so deployed here, and other security agencies, particularly the civil defense and all others. Um, this, 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 this is not, I don't think that um, this criminal will have an opportunity to penetrate. You see, the aim of, of, of most of this kidnap is, first of all, to register their presence and to create fear in the people. Two, for the purposes of um, getting money, raising money either for some other criminal activities. It is believed that um, some of the Boko Haram individuals, some of the uh, Boko Haram um, operatives, or what, what do you call them, um, are, are sometimes relying on, on, on some of this money of these other criminals. Um, and, and that's why we're saying that bandits and kidnappers can, can be branded as, um, uh, as um, insurgents, terrorists. Terrorist. Okay. And so um, it's, it's, it's a wake-up call. And um, the university must know that this could happen. Okay. And therefore, um, I'm sure that um, there will be some templates set up because they are always inside are giving this intelligence and information. Okay. These people should be sieved out okay. uh, and be met to, to bear the consequences. <laughs> and then um, some of the eyewitnesses should also be able to volunteer uh, information so that this information can be converted into intelligence so that we get to these people that have done this. Because when they do and go away and touch, then it creates problem for that organization and for that system. Okay. Now, as an expert, how would you advise the affected families to handle this matter whenever they are contacted? Uh, it has happened because um, the equipment, you know, uh, placed at the disposal of most security operatives, from the military to, 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 to the least um, 
security agencies like, like the private guards. Uh, sometimes they are not very adequate and exact, but I think we are launching into the ICT war. And I am very, very optimistic and I'm sure and I'm aware that there are some equipments that could, could, could get these people using the NIN. This NIN will definitely um, contribute effectively to the sieving and you know, um, copy and, 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 and you know, mopping up of, of, of this criminal. And um, I, I am sure and I know that uh, this is going to be one test for the security agencies and all those that are in security um, cycle, including the university itself. Uh, it won't be like the one in most um, disadvantaged areas in the rural areas and in the forest. It's okay. We'll still be talking more. We shall be going on a short break and we'll be back shortly to stay with us. This is NTA News 24 broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime on the following platforms. For more information, log on to our website www.nta.ng or join us on our social media handles Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA, NTA News 24. News and more news. Welcome back. The program is Nigeria Today and we are discussing how best to tackle kidnapping in the FCT. And our guest is still with us. I want to talk about the use of technology in locating bandits who just, bandits who just come around, abduct people and disappear. What is the role of technology? How can we be done with this issue of banditry in this country with the use of technology? Yes, um, just, just, just a few hours ago, I was sharing with some of the operatives of the Nigerian police where they had um, tracked someone and I've also through the use of um, some of the communication that has gone on between him and others and they're able to seek them out and identify them and fish them out. Uh, I can tell you that um, um, that the intelligent, the, 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 the ICT equipment is, is greatly required in, in, in a cosmopolitan city like Abuja. And um, with this, like those of others that have happened in the schools, there are compromise, no doubt. The community where these things happen, there are those who also have volunteered to give intelligent information to these criminals. They also have the opportunity to even lead and tell them exactly what time to come and what time to go. And when they are out, they also monitor uh, to know what, what, what the, uh, the relations of the victims or the security agencies are doing uh, in, trying to, in trying to get them. And so, you know, there are a lot of compromise because um, most of this thing is as a result of um, wanting money, wanting um, to have to live above their means, or some of them that are less, no employment, are responsible for this. Okay. And so I can assure you that um, it's going to be better with the ICT using intelligence because it gives you the exact thing and it will also help. But I want to let you know that there are people in the community, each time there is an arrest, there is a kidnapping, there is also one of the or some of the people in that community must have compromised and are working in tandem with these criminals okay thank you very much now we also we would like to join a security expert vazum mohammed ali he's uh joining us to also talk on this issue you're welcome to nigeria today uh, thank you for having me okay we also want to hear your thoughts on the recent abductions that took place at the University 
of Abuja. What are your comments on this development? Insecurity is commonplace today in Nigeria. And uh, the Northwest geopolitical zone is worse hit for that. So the kidnapping in the University of Abuja does not come as a surprise because since five months ago, there have been sufficient uh, indicators that these bandits, if not properly taken care of, are gradually but steadily inching towards Abuja. This we have made manifestly clear since five months ago, immediately after the abduction of students of Kagara Secondary School, later followed by the abduction of the Saluhu Tonko Islamia School in Tegina, all in Niger states. Uh, that was the time action supposed to have been taken in order to safeguard all our schools. And you will, listeners will remember clearly that in the Northwest, almost all uh, state governments closed down schools, which at that time we described as def defeatist, because government should not, under whatever circumstance, uh, took the action that was taken then by closing schools, because doing that is kind of admitting defeat. But be that as it may, uh, something tangible should have been done. And uh, it's, it's like uh, little or nothing was done. And this is why uh, these bandits have the audacity to come into the uh, uh, staff quarters of University of Abuja and abduct three professors and members of their families. Uh, that is not uh, enough because uh, little or nothing has been done to track them down. Up, up to this moment, as we speak, nobody has been picked or has anybody been able to establish a link between the abductors and their abductees. And until we are able to do that, we'll, we'll continue to face uh, these problems. Uh, this, again, is as a result of our inability to be proactive, because most of the time we have only been reactive. It is not today that the issue of banditry, banditry and kidnapping started. This is something that started as far back as 2011 in Zamfara State. Uh, gradually but steadily, it continued, it continued to blossom. Today, kidnapping is an industry of its own in Nigeria, particularly in the Northwest geopolitical zone. Because like it or leave it, between 11 March 2021 to 19th October 2021, these bandits have been able to collect 564,750,000 naira as ransom money. So you can see this is an industry of its own. And we need to sit up and identify who the syndicate managers are because nobody will tell me this 500 million is right there in the bush. It's right living right here amongst us. So we need to do something to identify who these syndicate managers are, who is doing what and why, and then ensure that punitive measures are taken against anybody found wanted. Uh, until we are able to punish uh, offenders, we will continue to face this problem. With due respect, I think part of the problem is our inability to address the underlying factors or causes of these acts of banditry and kidnapping. And on the other hand, our weak criminal justice system has made it so easy for people to do as they wish. Because for quite some time, some of these bandits have been arrested. How many of them have, have been made to face fire in court? When you talk, lawyers will say human rights. The people that are kidnapping and even killing in the process, and they human beings, don't they have human rights? So these are some of the issues we need to look at, and squarely too. Then members of our security agencies, they are doing the best they can, but they need to add more efforts. And the state governments need to sit up and ensure that uh, security operations are properly and adequately funded. Some of these governors will be collecting funds from Abuja, but they are not funding the security agencies in their states. Security men are not magicians. They need to be funded properly and kitted properly, then they will work. But why you don't kit them and you don't give proper funding? For goodness sake, what do you expect them to do? While some of these bandits are carrying arms and ammunition that are more superior to those uh, 
carried by 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 by, by government uh, agents then what do you, what do you expect so we need to address some of these underlying factors and again there is a need for our security agencies to try to be proactive for too long we have been reactive and we have been sitting it is now time for us to do some standing and take some actions Ahmed Ali, you've, in fact, you've talked extensively. In fact, most of the questions I needed to ask you, you've answered already. Now, you talked about uh, intelligence gathering, that they were, they, we, they, uh, they were, you had information about the bandits coming, closing in on Abuja. We had this information. Yes, we, we heard it on the social media. But if people had this information and nothing was done, what is the problem? What was the gap? What happened? Well, uh, the need for intelligence gathering and information uh, is, is so important for us to succeed as a people and as a nation. But some of these state governors are not willing to spend. You need, you need to spend money in order to gather intelligence. It, it won't come to you just like that on a platter of gold. You need to spend money. How many? of these governors or even the operatives how many of them are willing to give money in order to have credible and actionable intelligence until we are able to do that certainly we will continue to be faced by some of these problems so government should put aside particularly the state governors all the, the security funds they are collecting from abuja let them put it to to to, to, to work let it be put to work so that together we'll be able to salvage our states from the ravages of banditry and kidnapping. Until we are able to do that, this issue will continue to grow. Because today, banditry and kidnapping has become, like I said, an industry. And we need to sit up and fight it together. And part of fighting this is for everybody to come on board. Let all hands be on deck for us to fight it together. And members of the general public should be very willing, very willing to please pass any information that is credible to the relevant security agencies for action. While we continue to tolerate and condone criminals within our midst, even if it is, if it is our sons that are found wanting, please let's report them. That makes us good citizens. We should be willing and ready to report any social malcontent to the right authority. That way we'll be able to take care of the problems uh, bedeviling our nation today. Maybe as uh, the bandits have, uh, have the effrontery to come into the federal capital territory, those who matter and need to do the right thing will probably do the right thing. Now, you have any closing remarks for us, DIG? Yes, um, he, has, he has said it all. Uh, members of the public must be very interested in their safety and must also watch their environment because oftentimes we see people that are strange people and we don't say nothing. Uh, a lot of this um, kidnapping and other crime that has been committed either in schools or in the cities are things that we would have been able to discover if everyone should take security as his personal um, responsibility to assist. And so I am calling upon everyone in this country that when you notice something, you say something. Yes. If you don't, you don't know who next. And since kidnapping is a business that people have taken to, um, each time they come, people are likely to identify some people mm. as strange people mm. in the locality. Mm. And you better press suspicion on them. If you press sub suspicion on them mm. and call the security, mm. um, Thank that's you. been done. Thank you so much for your insights. Mm. Retired the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, DIG Habila Jushak. We thank you so much mm. for joining us. Thank you for having me. We also thank you, uh, security expert Mohammed Ali, who joined us via Zoom. We appreciate your thoughts and your suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And to our viewers, thank you once again for staying with us. Nigeria Today is on weekdays at 7.30 in the evening. You can also watch the program on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. My name is Lydia Ojiochi. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.
Ich will den Kurkumpf. Und sie in die Richtung. Oh. 